and your city has an issue with Enbridge not paying what they're supposed to pay. Correct. Give, give us a resume of, what's your name please? My name is Jeff Hepler, H-E-P-P-L-E-R. Uh, I'm the police chief for the village of Augusta, a sergeant for the city of Galesburg. I'm a county commissioner. How are you doing? I own a business in Battle Creek. I know you. I've been a firefighter for many, many, many years. Because there was flooding at the time of the oil spill, mm -hmm. a lot of land that would normally be dry was covered with water. Well, when the oil spill took place, it uh, obviously went all wherever the water was, and it went onto the people's properties along the river from Marshall, clear to uh, Galesburg, or to Comstock. Um, which is quite a distance of some 36 miles, give or take a foot or two. Uh, many millions of gallons of product that they had spilled. Um, therefore, when the, as the waters receded, uh, as the flood lessened, uh, the uh, oil was left on the properties. Um, however, it came to the land, uh, they've kind of walked along and studied it and said, well, it's not that bad, it'll go away eventually. So they told you to cover up the oil? Yeah. They didn't tell you to clean it up. They told you to cover it up, plant grass over it? Yes. And do you think that's the proper way to clean up an oil spill? wouldn't think so, but not sure. I'm not an expert in that. <laughs> do you have to be an expert to, <laughs> to know that, Jeff? No. Of course, if they own the property, then they don't have to worry about cleaning it up. Uh, Enbridge was um, instructed by EPA and by their uh, own accord that they would come in and they were going to clean up and make things right. That's from the president of Enbridge. Um, my business is we have over half a mile of river frontage along the river. Um, uh, they did come down they did some immediate shore cleanup but uh, uh, we noticed that there and they we have documentation of oil rings on trees um, we've asked whether or not this will be detrimental to the trees we log our property we have 80 acres in Battle Creek or Emmett Township in Battle Creek uh, replanting because we have been in the process over the years we take trees out we plant new trees to replace them mm -hmm. Um, we're trying to clean up our forest, uh, and they're saying might not be a good idea to plant new trees in that particular soil at this point in time. So I'm not sure. So they're saying that it could be contaminated so bad that you shouldn't plant new trees. Is well, that what you're su su the, that's suggesting? That's what they're suggesting. Um, and how much, you know, I, I, so we're trying to get an answer to these questions. They said you could swim in the river last year and that you could eat the fish. Why would they well, now? They opened it up late last year in the fall. What do you think about the fish that are being found with tumors and oil in them? Um, I would be very concerned about that uh, uh, problem being in our waterway. Obviously that's going to be an EPA and a DEQ uh, issue. Um, which I understand they're supposed to go back and do some more cleanup this year. Um, obviously, if there's new evidence saying that that was a mistake, then they need to go back and correct it. Do you know how they found out about that new evidence? Probably by you. <laughs> <laughs> how long is it going to take for that area to become safe? I mean, obviously, there's animals now living in that area. Um, I'm worried about the people that are breathing these chemicals. I so mean, am I. I'd say they got some explaining to do. Right. What do you think about the chemicals? I mean, Ember sent a letter to the EPA the day after the spill that even though we have reports that happened on Friday the 23rd. So they say it happened the 26th, according to Embridge. 27th, they said at 100 different air sample tests, there was zero benzene to be found in hydrogen sulfide. Now we know that that is untrue because we have the EPA reports that say it was 16 parts per million, which is thousands of times the legal limit for long-term exposure. What do you what do you think about that? Because they didn't evacuate you guys. 
Nope, we evacuated ourselves because we couldn't stand the smell down there. Um, Those chemicals. I mean, a lot of a lot of residents, you know, that that you you are over and you protect those people breathe in these chemicals certainly um, obviously in any kind of spill situation you're worried about the effects of what the chemical will do um, and you know how many parts per million or billion uh, are harmful uh, both not only in the air but in the water and on the ground um, and I think it's uh, it's a problem that needs to be addressed um, and they need to step up and take care of that. Did very little to help businesses. Um, they had jobs that local people could do. Instead, they brought in people from other states. That doesn't help the Michigan economy. That doesn't help the people that they've hurt. What do you think about the illegal immigrants? I think that uh, was a mistake on their part. <laughs> This is really important because this this is the emergency book that we are trained with, and mine's a 2008, but we were trained in 2010 with it. So if we look up benzene, um, we'll go to B. We'll look up benzene right there. So it says, it tells us to go to 130. It's going to be on page 97. It tells us to go to 130. So then what we do is we go in here to the guide 130. Yep. Uh, evacuation for a large spill. Consider initial downwind evacuation for at least 300 meters, 1,000 feet. And that is from wherever the oil reached. Now we had oil that was all up in the swamps on both sides of the river because of the flood. And the people weren't evacuated properly. Um, by Embridge. People living 200 feet away from the river. Water. Right. It says 200 feet, but it's a thousand in our training books. It's this is what we're supposed to go by. This is what the police go by. Mm -hmm. Embridge went by 200 feet, and that was only for a small section. That was just in Marshall. That wasn't even. They didn't evacuate the people in Battle Creek, miles down the road, for 10 days. Some of them after the the levels were way lower than what they were at the beginning. So, and then every chemical in here, toluene, hydrogen sulfide, all of them have that same distance. I've checked them all on, on the MSDS sheet from Embridge. The reason why I wanted to talk about that, Jeff, is because it's stressful on you when you know that you're supposed to, um, you know, do what you can when there's a spill. And so, and I know you're a good man, and I, I just know it's hard when you don't get all the facts up front. Exactly. We need to have facts to protect the citizens, um, to protect the properties, to, to do what we can to mitigate a problem. What have I been doing to try to help? Well, you've been trained to inform the public as to the, uh, the problems that uh, were not uh, taken care of appropriately um, and communicate that to both the citizens and to the uh, or to the public and to governments that are, that are out there. John has me trudging through another swamp. Um, where he says there's lots of oil. We're gonna have a look at that right now.